What I want to talk about today is one bit images and fax machines. Now you might think, why would we want to talk about fax machines? That's surely a, a technology, the technology that's passe at this stage. And it certainly is. But there's a form of compression that's used very much in fax machines. So that's one thing we want to look at. But also, the fax machine illustrates how very often you take some data, you compress it, and you get a bit stream. And then those bits can be further compressed using another scheme. So the fax machine takes some compression, like compresses stuff one way, and then the output of that is the input for another compression scheme. So you're kind of compressing twice. Generally, you know you've compressed enough when the data seems to be fairly random. If it looks not random, if there are patterns and things in it, there's probably scope for, for some more compression, but we won't get into that. So one bit images. So one bit images, we're talking here about the pixel depth. Pixel is one bit, then it's either black or white. So one bit images have black pixels and white pixels and there's no gray involved. And they're usually used where you know there are limits on the technology you have. So that can be just, you know, in the past when technology was constrained because it was expensive. Or you just wasn't practical. So in the case of fax machines. Or also if you just want to do something on the cheap. So I mean if you take, you know, Let's say you invented some super cool game that people carried around with them. You know, you wanted to make it on the cheap. If you did it one bit pixels, you could probably, you know, be much cheaper than a, than a more expensive display. So, do you remember the Nokia 3210? That was probably your first mobile phone. It was a one bit display, just black pixels and white pixels. We turn our noses up now at a, at a one bit display. Imagine if, it seems insane, but imagine if the Nokia 3210 took pictures they'd be one bit pictures, you know, which wouldn't be much use, but you'd be surprised. And fax machines then use one bit images. You can put a fa page into a fax machine that comes out the other end. Now this here, is anybody any kind of feel for what this might be? Yeah, this is a boat on the lakes of Killarney. But obviously if we didn't tell you that, you could have a job to, to figure it out. Now part of the problem here actually is not just that it's only black pixels and white pixels, is that the resolution is very low as well. The pixels are quite big, as you can see there. Actually the way they're, they're appearing here, they're kind of round the edges. So there's very few pixels, but also they're only black or white, there's no, there's no gray. If I had an image at this resolution, and there was some gray scale, you might, you might get a sense of what it is a bit more. Anybody recognize this? Well, not from personal use, but this is a piece of a 500 euro note. But obviously, it's only one bit, so I mean, if you went into a shop with something looking like that, you probably wouldn't, your, your criminal career wouldn't, wouldn't take you very far if you went with a, a one bit copy of a 500 euro note. So again, we've just got black pixels and white pixels. And again, here, the resolution is quite poor as well, so the pixels are quite big. I thought this would come out much better because this was a stencil. This is a stencil from a piece of graffiti in Buenos Aires. And really that was only black and white anyway. Like someone took a stencil up against the wall and sprayed it. So it should be just black and white. Because the resolution is so poor, because there are so few pixels, it looks fairly shabby as well. You can, you know, if the pixels are small enough, you can, from a distance, even get the illusion of a kind of a shade of grey and stuff with black pixels and white pixels and black pixels and white pixels and stuff. But generally, you know, fact, one bit images aren't particularly useful for anything except diagrams and drawings. I mean, if you had a version of this page in just black pixels and white pixels, it'd be quite acceptable, really because it's only black ink and white ink. There's no gray in a document. So documents and drawings, text, fax machines were, were fine for that. So there's a picture of a fax machine. 
Have, you ever, have any of you ever actually used a fax machine? I mean, you still see them around, like. I saw one in Manhattan Point the other day. I was surprised. So you basically put a page in your fax machine. You ring up this number. It goes beep, 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 whatever. You press a button. The page gets scanned, you know. And then a copy comes out the other end on a piece of paper. So that's what a fax machine does. I mean, if you showed a fax machine to a seven-year-old now, they'd say, well, is there something wrong with your email? Like, why don't you just email it? But there was a time when fax machines were the bee's knees. Every business had one. They were all over the shop and um, made lots of money for phone companies. So they had a modem built in. And so the two fax machines would, would talk to each other. I think some even mobile phone companies can let you add fax to your voicemail. Or if a person rings up and they get your voicemail, they can press a button and then they can start the fax and it goes beep, beep, beep into your voicemail and then the fax turns up. I think you can then log into your voicemail and send the fax somewhere and not why you'd bother. Right? Yeah, just email them, you know. But fax machines anyway show us um, two interesting pieces of technology or coding. Technology-wise, they're fairly old now at this stage. So run length encoding is a very simple form of compression. And what you do is if you have runs of a symbol, if you have the same thing over and over and over again, right? instead of repeating, instead of going A, 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 B, 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 I just say, we'd say six A's. Like if you were trying to explain this to me now, you'd say, well, there's six A's, three B's, nine C's, five A's, you know, you probably wouldn't bother going A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 you know, you would lose the will to live after a while. Now, of course, English doesn't really have long runs like that. I mean, if you were trying to code a book using run length, and run length encoding, you probably wouldn't get very far. You might have a double L every now and again, you know, calling, falling. But by the time you'd say two L's, you'd have said L twice. You know, so it's not any use for English. But if you look at a page, I mean, if you had this image digitized, this page was in digital form. I mean, loads of white, you know, you, you wouldn't have to say white pixel, 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 white pixel. You just say like this, you know, 400 white pixels there. Loads of them. So fax machines use run length encoding. And most of the document is white. So what a fax machine does is it basically says there's this many white pixels, this many black pixels, this many white pixels, this many black pixels, this many white pixels. And most of the time, I'm sure it's just telling you there's a shed load of white pixels here. So if this document, say, if this page was, I don't know what might the page be, you know, say, 800 pixels across by 1,200 pixels down, which would be fairly shabby in terms of resolution, but probably what a fax machine might do. Instead of going, you know, white, 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 or if it was obvious, just be one bit. So instead of going, like, you know, one, 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 800 times, you'd say, well, there's 800 white pixels. Next line. 800 white pixels. Next line, 800 white pixels. Eventually, you'd go maybe 400 white pixels and a few black pixels. And then some white pixels and then some black pixels, and so on. Get the idea? So with a fax machine, you actually always start with white. And what they actually do is there's an imaginary, if you take the, the image you're faxing, there's imaginary white line on the left, I think it's called oversampling, so to ensure that you always start on with white. So then when you change, so if you're doing white and then you change, well then you know it's black and then it's white and it's black. And then also there's an end of line marker at the end of each line, just a bit code that says this is the end of the line. So that way if the, if the receiver gets a bit lost, you know, or if a few bits go astray, well actually even if one bit goes astray, 
but at least then it only affects that line and, and the, the receiver knows to can pick up again and start the next line. So for this image here, we're saying there's 25 white pixels and then we've got an end of line. Then we're saying if we look up here, we've got white times two, we've got black five times, which comes to here, then we've got white three times, then black five times, then white three times, black five times, and then white twice. And then end of line goes on to a new line. Then we've got white two, black one, white, how many is that there, four, yep, nine. So nine white pixels, one black pixel, seven white pixels according to this, yep, one black pixel, and then four white pixels, and so on. Now in this small example, it doesn't work so well, but you can see in a document like this, there are huge expanses of white. So instead of going one, 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 one for white, if you just say, you know, I've got 800 white pixels, boom, you're done, you're on the next line. Does everybody get the idea? So instead of saying white, 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 or in this case, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero. Because you could easily, I mean, you could imagine you just go white, 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 you know, one, 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 one and zero for the black ones. And you'd have a, it wouldn't do too bad, like, you know? But we can actually save some space by coding the runs, because they're so common in fax machines, or in document, the documents that fax machines send. So if you just had this then, you could recreate the, the image, such as it is. Not a terribly exciting one. Get the idea? Any questions so far? Now, it turns out, though, that you can take this information, you know, white 2, black 5, white 3, black 5, and you can code that more efficiently as well then. You don't even just send that. You take this information and you compress that. Because it turns out that some runs occur more frequently than others. So the people that were designing the protocol for the fax machines, they basically had, you know, thousands of documents or whatever, a couple hundred, a couple thousand, I don't know. And they coded all the runs. And then they looked at those and, and saw that, you know, obviously all white, you know, an all white line was fairly common. An all black line was fairly unusual, it was possible. And so they found that certain runs occurred more frequently than others. And so what they did then was they put that into Hoffman's coding algorithm and came up with variable length codes for each of the run lengths. So if we were to look here at, say, white 25, they came up with a code for 25 white pixels. And that's what this is here. That's what I've given you here. So if you look here in this sheet, 25 white pixels is zero one zero one zero one one for example this here in terminating codes so looking from looking at this for example we can deduce that in the documents that they were looking at the most common runs of black pixels were two and three pixels long. So when you looked at the chunks of black pixels, they found that having two or three black pixels was, was very common. So that's why the codes here are <coughs> very short for the black runs of two and three pixels, because they're very common. I see, I've, I've lost people now, I can see from your faces. So they took the documents and they looked at C, so they had like, you know, runs of different lengths. And then they used Huffman coding to figure out codes to represent those lengths. 
And we can see here that because a black run length of 2 has a small code, that's an obvious sign then that it occurred very, very frequently. And if you think about it too, if you're looking at a document, a fax document, you know, but if you look at this line here coming down, I mean, in documents, you're going to have lots of lines like that. And that line was probably two pixels wide. Do you know? So if you were to round up all the different lengths of blacks and whites, you might find that two pixel black runs came up a lot. Now they cheated a bit, they were quite clever in that because you always start with white and you go white, black, white, black, white, black, whatever until you come to the end of the line. We have a slightly modified Huffman code in that we have variable length code for the white runs and a variable length code for the black runs. So the receiver has to know whether it's doing white or black at any one stage. Because if you look here Remember this prefix problem we talked about where if your phone number started with 999, nine, you know, that would cause problems for people. So you can't have that. Well, if you look here, the code for a black run of three pixels is one zero. But the code for a white run of eight pixels is, starts with one zero. So how do you know when you get one zero whether it's three black pixels or whether this is the start of eight white pixels and then you go on from there you don't know well you do know because as a receiver you're keeping track of I'm doing white I'm doing black now I'm doing white now I'm doing black now I'm doing white now I'm doing black so it switches backwards and forwards that way so as well as the codes for the runs, as well as the, the variable length codes, the receiver also needs to keep track of whether it's doing black or white in order for it to work out. So it's actually quite, it's clever enough. Now, it gets a bit mad then though, right? Because the runs, I didn't show you it all there, did I? This goes up to 63. You 63 black pixels or 63 white pixels. After that, then, you have codes for 64, 128, 192, basically in increments of 64. And we call these ones then the makeup codes. And what these are for is to say you wanted 330 pixels, right? This table doesn't go as far as 330. So you do the 320 pixels, which is 00110110. And then after that, you do the 10 white pixels to make it up to 330. But we're kind of into the territory now of the details of fax machines and moving away a bit from kind of valuable learning experience a bit. Okay, so that's what these termination codes are. So if you have really, really long runs beyond 63 pixels, you use the makeup codes to give you like a big chunk and then you add on the rest then using those. The end of line there is down the bottom. That's um, a bunch of ones. How many ones? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 10 zeros and a 1 is the end of line marker. Now, that's just one of the modes then that the fax machine uses. They looked at it closely and they discovered that very often the line above, and like the, the line you're coding at the moment is very similar to the line you just sent. That the, the lines in the fax machine, if you look at one and then look at the next one, they don't often vary that much. You know, they tend to be quite similar. So there's a form of differential coding in fax machines as well, whereby you code the current line as a difference between this line and the line before it. So if the, this current line was the same as the line before, it would take a very few bits. And you're only coding how it changes. Now, 
It's interesting that it does that, that we've seen that theme again coming up, the differential, the difference coding. And we saw that with the audio. Did we see it anywhere else? No, we only saw it with the audio where you code between the difference between the sample and the one that came before it. We see difference coding again, don't worry. So that's a theme that comes up as well, where you know this chunk here is quite similar to the previous chunk of data. So we're only going to tell you the difference between the two of them. So fax machines also do that. But I looked at that and I lost the will to live, to be honest. It was just too, it was too, um, it was too dull. I put the whole spec on the podcast for you just if you're really, really curious, you know. But um, it's not really, it's not really useful. Now, the, different, the difference coding setting is very handy if you've got an image. You know, it doesn't work so well for, for text, but you can imagine if you have an image, you know, a big, I mean, you could see if we had a photograph of that painting there in the wall, which is a big black square, is it actually a big black painting or is there just something missing? Anyway, if we had a picture of that painting there, okay, you could see how the first few lines would be all white, 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 and then we might have, you know, 400 white pixels, 500 black pixels, 400 white pixels. But then the next line would be exactly the same as the one above it. And the one beyond the, below that would be the same as the one above, and the one below that would be the same as the one above. So instead of saying that over and over again, you can just talk about it being the same or how, how different it is from the one above. So the difference coding works in faxes as well, provided there's images. So if you had a very sophisticated fax, it would probably analyze the image and say, OK, that's the kind of thing now where I think I want to use the difference coding. So it tells the fax machine at the other end that's what we're going to do. There was talk then of fax machines you know, where they had grayscale, where maybe 256 shades of gray. And then there's even talk of color fax machines. I don't know that they ever pan out. I've never seen the color fax machine. Anyone? I think by the time they got around to it, people were just like, Mr. Fickle, I'll just email you. You know? OK. So that's that, really. Now, what I have is a little exercise for you. I wasn't sure if we had time, but I think we do have time. So here is a message that a fax machine has sent. I've put in bold here the end of line bit sequences. Now, looking at this, obviously, the end of line is so, um, is so long that actually this, the message, because it's only on a grid of 12 by 12 pixels, you'd actually been better off just you know using a whole bit for each pixel. But I just want to see how it works. So I've, I've put the end of line marker in bold. And obviously, I've gone on to a new line as well, just to make it easier for you. So I want you to, using the terminating codes here, see if you can design the image on the sheets here. So that should be loads of fun. So I'll get you started off. If we look here, we've got, we know we're starting with white. So we want a, a code word on the white side of the table that starts with 111. One, one. Is there anything there? So 1110. 1110 one, one, is a white run of six pixels. So that's six white pixels. So that's 1110 one, one, done now. So up next then, we have 010. We'll just see if we can do anything with that. In fact, we can actually. So the 010 gives us a black run of one pixel. So that's the black. So now we're going back to white. 1100 zero, zero is five white pixels. And then we'll end of line. So the first line is six white pixels, one black pixel, and five white pixels. See how you go from there. 